Okay, good morning. It's a little bit of a rainy day out today, so I've just got a couple little things I want to do. Uh, I really screwed up my uh, my videos yesterday, so I'll try to cover some of the stuff I I missed yesterday. But uh, I wanted to show you my uh, this is my electric inlet. You see, I put the spray foam in there. It rained last night, so that's pretty cool. Um, and there's my city fill. And there's my, uh, there's, oh, that's my uh, uh, tank fill with the hose. And this is my city water connection. So I'm going to drill those out, and then they'll be perfect holes. So I'll be right back. All right, it's just spray foam, so I'm gonna try this with uh, with one hand just so you can kind of kind of see what I'm gonna do here. I mean, it's just foam, so all I'm doing is getting rid of the foam. I'm gonna come out the other side. I got to uh, I got to get rid of some of it cuz plugging up the uh, actually actually if I just come <coughs> You know, I bought one of those things to uh you know, like a uh uh you know, to, uh, what the hell's it called? A, uh, nah. what's it called? It's called a, uh, there we go. It's called a, um, what the hell's it called? Uh, tripod. You know, a little tiny tripod so I could set it up. But of course, it's on my desk at home. from this side a little bit the foam is too I don't know if I'm still recording exactly where I'm at but yeah okay the foam is filling up the uh, the thing here so I'm gonna, uh, I'll punch through on this side a little bit and then maybe I can see that I'll just put that sucker out and you see you see what's left there now it's perfectly sealed on the inside okay and uh, right to my uh, right to my uh, to my plywood that I put in so now I've got a good solid place for my uh, uh, my power inlet okay it should be, should be nice and waterproof and uh, life is good I may even I may even wrap that with some aluminum tape just to give it you know to never be too clear <laughs> all right I'm gonna have to do the same thing over here is peel this peel this tape off try to set this thing back down and then you can kind of, kind of see what I'm doing um, like I said I bought one of those it's called a tripod oh, sorry yeah. thing. Okay. Oh, there we go. I don't know can you see it uh, angle it down a little bit There we go. All right, you should be able to see that. Still recording. All right, I'm gonna change out my. Uh...
I got to switch out the uh, hole saw for a bigger one. And, uh, what's this one? Okay. These are pretty, pretty easy to, to switch out. You just uh, pull this uh, spring-loaded thing down. Just tighten it up, move it back a little bit, and the spring goes in. And then you just tighten it up. Okay. Alright. This tape was just to keep that that spray foam from just flowing in here like crazy. I wanted a place for it to stop. Um, so it would stay inside and not get all over the wood. Alright, so let's see. Let's find a good spot there. I'm guessing you can still see. And there you go. I'm going to uh, try to round it out a little bit better. damn good I'm guessing you can still see pull off my tape and voila we have a perfect hole right, try to peel this off one is a little bit bigger Change out my. I guess you guys can still see. Can you see, see the bottom hole? It looks like you can. I don't know. I got to get that little tripod and bring it. Bring it next time. Right, here we go. Get it off there. 
camera mode. Just don't want it to spin a little bit. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can. you guys can still see Assuming you guys can still see that, and there it is. Okay, I'm gonna drill it out just to make it better. Perfectly round holes. We've got some uh, some mineral spirits. I'm gonna get this off of here. All right, I'm gonna cut this one off, and I'll be right back. Install these these back in. Now this isn't uh, this isn't the final install because I have to hook my water hoses up and everything. It'll be so much easier to you know, pull them out, make your connections, and then push them back in, but I've got some more, I've got some more cabinet stuff to do. I use some, uh, some acetone to remove, uh, some of the, uh, some of the residual, uh, <coughs> spray foam they got on the side of the trailer no big deal uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna screw those back in I'll be right back okay. all right got those screwed back in I'm pleased with the uh, 
with the way they look. All right. And uh, like I said, I may even go on the hunt for some sort of a, you know, a rubber grommet or something to go in there. But uh, my electric looks good. My electric's going to come in, go across. Oh, and by the way, I did find... I did find some... Uh, I might as well take this over here. I did find the right... Uh, Pecs fit in here, they are. I did find the right pecs fittings for uh, for my. Uh, Yeah, you can see. All right, right there. That looks good. Okay, I don't know if it's focused or not, but I found a half inch to half inch uh, pex fitting, which uh, I got a ninety, an elbow, and uh, and a straight on. But uh, I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, there it is. Okay. Well, that screws right on it there. <coughs> and, uh, oh. All right. That's nice and tight. And then your PEX, uh, PEX tubing goes right onto there. And, uh, I think I may try to find... A three-quarter inch one of these this is half inch um, but we'll see we'll see if they got it available I'm sure they do but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that right there and I'm gonna shove that package in there so I know what I got there whenever you buy tubing it just it seems so wasteful I only need I don't know if you can see the yeah right here I don't know if you can see that up there, that little hole right there. That's a 3 8 inch. That's just an air vent. So that when you're filling your tank with the big one, you need to let the air out of the tank so that the water can go in the tank. So that's what that little hose is for. And I had to buy 10 feet, and I only needed 3 inches. So... Um, but three feet was only three, I'm sorry, 10 feet was only $3. Uh, you know, I'm not even sure. I guess a little hardware store or something, I could have probably bought three inches of it. But what I need to do is I need to come out of the, uh, out of the vent. I don't know if you can see this or not. And I've got a, a reducer. It's a three eighths to half inch because my, my, my hose that goes to my tank and my fittings are all half inch. So right here, I'm just going to drop it down to 3 8 inch. No big deal. Again, I'm just going to stick that in the hole so I don't lose it. <laughs> and uh, like I said, I bought an, an, uh, an elbow also, but I don't need the elbow. Maybe I do. I don't know. It just depends on how I decide to hook it up. I may come straight in and, and drop, drop down. I don't know. It just depends. I'll, uh, I'll let you know, but it needs to come over and go that way, okay, so what else, what else can Vince tell you, I can't tell you nothing, um, okay. um got some trash here, I'm just going to, take over so like I said that's really the only reason I came today was to uh, just put those back on because of the rain and everything like that uh, even though the uh, 
the spray foam pretty much uh, kept the water out. I wanted to go ahead and put those back on. Oh, I wish I could turn this thing around. I used to be able to do that. But I can't, can't seem to figure out how to do that now. I don't know what that white button does. Yeah, I think I'll keep my mineral spirits rag outside. And take it home with me and throw it away. I've got it. It might, uh, it might decide it wants to catch fire. I'm talking about this rag right here. Whenever you're working with, you know, flammable shit, man, and if you, if you stick this stuff in a wad and then throw it in the garbage, I don't know, it could, could start a fire, I think. So I'm just gonna leave it in this bag, leave the bag open, stick it in the back of the truck. Um, Take this stuff back home. I don't need that anymore. And uh, like I said, after the rain last night, I think it's supposed to rain some more today. I uh, I only uh. I really only came to uh, to just do that, but uh, I think while I'm here, I'm just going to clean up my, my utility room so that when I come back Monday, I don't have to do it, so uh, let me do that, and then I'll be right back. Okay, part of the video yesterday that I did not get to show you, or I don't know what the hell happened to it, but I finished up the, uh, the plywood around the door in the utility room. And that's cut around that perfect. That happens to be where the, uh, you know, the power comes in. And, uh, of course, there's a piece in there. Because um, I'm anal, I'll be putting a piece on the on the top also. And, uh, now, keep in mind, this is where my this is where my water tanks are. Now, remember, they have heaters underneath of them, which is great. And I've got I've got a heat duct coming in. So this this you know this uh, water storage. Uh, you know, this is where my pumps are going to be. My pumps are going to be mounted on that wall right there, on that uh, uh, piece of plywood there, which is right above the tanks. Um, and you know, you you, you got to keep that all warm. Now there will be cabinet doors. I'll be building doors on those, you know, to keep the keep the heat inside that cavity. Um, of course, this room will be heated also because that, that duct down there is, is basically to keep this room, you know, above freezing. Um, as you all know, the room is insulated. Uh, the plywood's there. Um, I got two inches of foam on the other side. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there'll be some other things I'll have to do to... You know, like the doors, um, the doors are RV doors, they're insulated, but what I might do is on the inside of the doors, I'll probably have some, um, some sort of a, uh, like a canvas made that's, uh, thick, um, with snaps on it that I can snap it at the top secure and maybe one on the side and one at the bottom so that when I leave I can reach in and snap it but inside that canvas what I'll do is I'll put insulation material and so you know it'll just act as a as another uh, you know another barrier um, for when we're winter camping which we 
which I plan to do a lot of. Um, you know, anyway. So. Like I said, I yesterday I got I got this side. This cabinet is just about done. Uh, this um, this CSST or Home Flex pipe, um, which is here, um, there'll be a uh, piece of black pipe that comes up and will run across the bottom of the trailer, and there'll be a uh, a quick connect you know so that I can plug my propane into it um, but this connection here originally I had thought about just shoving this down in in the, in the hole which I'm not saying that I'm not going to and then do my connection down there but if I run a piece of black pipe and then elbow it up and then you know make my connection here I, I think I'm gonna like that better and then maybe I can put a shutoff valve or something like that. But, uh, you know, I don't need to know that right now. Uh, you'll know what I know. Um, these cabinets are, you know, the, the backs and the sides are done. I've got to build, I'm going to put some doors on them and some shelves. Same thing on this side over here. You know, got to have some, some shelves, some storage. Uh, let's see, a few months, well, maybe a month ago, I put, uh, put my box up, and one of the cool things about, <coughs> one of the cool things about now is I can start putting my electronics on the wall, because as I'm running the wire, see where the wire is? Now imagine about 30 more of those. Um, going up and over and you see that slit right there that's where they're all gonna go up when they come off this wall and trust me and I, I don't even know if you could see the whole wall but this whole wall will be full of wires and um, breakers and fuses and transfer switches and surge protectors and you know, just a myriad of things, but all of the electronics, well, I call them electronics, the refrigerator, the stove, uh, the, the hot water tank, the furnace, all of that comes back to here. Um, of course, the, the furnace and the, uh, well, the, the other aspect of the furnace is the, uh, the comfort systems, the, uh, the electric heat, which, uh, is a little more than 20 amps so you use a 30 amp breaker or 30 amp uh, some 10 10 4 wire 10 3 with a green and uh, you know so that's got to run from here all the way to where my uh, heat and refrigerator and all that stuff's going to go um, whoa, almost fell down okay. get outside But anyway, that wall right there will have all my electronics mounted. That wall is an inch thick. Uh, it's a half inch on this side. And on the back side is another half inch. They're glued and screwed together. Um, so that wall is very strong. Um, and some of, much of my, my electronics, it's... You know, it's not super heavy, but it's it's heavy enough that when you're bouncing down the road, you know, you don't want it to come loose. So, um, if I feel like something may be a little more heavier than the, you know, the screws or the wall can handle, I'll, I'll brace it up with, with something underneath it, you know, and, and be able to attach it that way too. But every bit of this, um, each component that I install, I'll be videoing it and explaining it and, and why and everything. Um, you know for example like this right here when you're at a campground or at home or whatever there'll be a there'll be an electric service right there and it's 50 amp and you take a cord and you plug it right in and then that's going to go into a surge protector because you know 
you never know what the power condition or situation is here if you get a surge comes in blows your fucking trailer up doesn't blow it up but it's gonna it could damage your electronics so the very first thing that will be um, from here before the electric panel will be a surge protector a 50 amp and then uh, from the surge protector will go into an automatic transfer switch where you say well why an automatic transfer switch well if the power goes out at the campground for whatever reason and I want to run my generator which is not there yet but it will be the generator will plug into a outlet down here which is tied into the other side of that automatic transfer switch and thus will power uh, either the main panel or the sub panel. I haven't figured all that out yet, but I did post a, a diagram of it. Um, but again, we're talking about 110 volt, like house power. That's what runs your house. But when the power comes in, 90% of it has to be converted to 12 volt. So you take your 110 that comes from the RV park or campground or whatever brings it into the trailer it converts it from 110 to 12 volt that's called conversion within the the battery system which will be here we're going to take the battery power and convert it to AC power which is called inversion so that's an inverter. Um, so if we're not at a campground that has uh, utility power and we're simply running off of batteries, uh, solar which is on the roof or the generator, that power will go into an inverter and will power things in the trailer that require 110, such as maybe a microwave. Uh, the heat, uh, the, um, the refrigerator, the, uh, uh, the charging self, whatever it is, you know, whatever 110 we've got in there. Now, the refrigerator runs on propane, which they will be mounted here, the tanks will be, and then, of course, over there where I showed you a few minutes ago, the yellow pipe, which is piped up to where the... Uh, appliances are going to be located. Four appliances are going to be running off propane. Anyway, the refrigerator runs on propane or electric. So when I'm plugged into the campground, I'm not using propane to power my refrigerator. It's running on electric. But as soon as I unplug, the refrigerator automatically switches over to propane, which will be located here. And, um, you know, all the other stuff. So there's, a, there's quite a bit of thought. Um, from, from my 12-volt system back here, I'm going to be running a, a line up to the front of the trailer and putting a, a sub-panel, a DC sub-panel, <clears throat> right here when you come in the door there's going to be a cabinet right here which is going to have my my awning switches my light switches uh basically um several of my dc uh powered items that i need access uh power to right here um so i've got some four gauge wire that's going to come from my utility room, from my uh, shunt, which I'll explain the shunt to you later. Um, and it's going to run through the ceiling and drop down into here. And in this wall right here will be a 12 volt sub panel. And I'll be able to tie my, my lights into it. I'll be able to tie my awning into it. Uh, 
any USB, uh, not USB, but any 12 volt uh, stuff that I've got up here. Um, I'll be installing some lights out there. You know, my, my porch light, which is there. Um, uh, water pump, there'll be a switch here in this, in this wall here to turn on the water pump. Uh, be a switch to turn from propane or gas heat to electric heat. Um, you know, just, uh, some good stuff. Um, I didn't really work in here today, so I didn't unpack anything and I don't want to, but, um, while I'm standing here, this piece of, uh, of PVC board is what I'm going to do my, my bathroom walls, um, top side and this wall right here this wall over here I'll probably do in the uh, in the knotty pine just kind of break it up a little bit I don't want uh, the bathroom to be just one giant white room but um, this is plastic this is PVC board and it can get wet it can it can be white it can be painted it can be sanded it can be you can do anything you want with it um, So you see that red wire right there? That's one of the uh, the awning wires. It's got a it's got to join up with this one right here. So here's this, and I just got to continue it on down to my to my where my awning switches are. And the awnings are the two things that pop out of the sides over there. Um, but anyway, uh, all the wires will be coming through the ceiling and going to their various locations. Okay. We all know that right over here, you see my yellow pipe coming out, and you see the uh, the red pipe there, and there's a blue one. There's a blue one under here. That's where my hot water tank is going to go. So I've got to build a cabinet for those. Um, and this... I want you to see this beam right here. That beam runs the entire length of the trailer. So where I've lifted up my floor is about two and a quarter inches below that. So what's cool is when I mount my, right there where that Amazon box is, is basically where the furnace is going to go. And remember my plenum is right there in that in that cavity right there so and it comes off the front of the uh, the furnace and it goes down into the floor and it supplies all my heat ducts but anyway so rather than have my furnace sitting directly on the floor I'll be able to raise it up about an inch and a half so that um, because it has to be vented out the side of the uh, of the trailer and then right above that, sitting on a platform, you know, in a cabinet, will be the refrigerator. And the refrigerator's right here. And I have to blast through uh, about a 21 inch by 15 inch panel, which uh, is right here. Okay. So let me try to set that, let me set that down. Okay, see that right there? That's gonna be mounted on the outside. So a hole has to be cut to, to accommodate that. So, so if you can imagine that being on the outside of the trailer, no big deal. But anyway, I've gotta cut that. And when I cut, I'm inevitably gonna be cutting through a, um, right here. Okay, that's a seam, that's a beam. I'll be cutting across that beam. So what I'm gonna do is go to the aluminum shop and they're gonna weld me a new brace that catches this one and brings it across. So that when I install this thing, I have something to screw in. It's made out of aluminum. I never have to worry about it rusting or anything. Um, so, 
what else can I tell you? I can't tell you anything else. Um, let me get out of here. <laughs> Keep in mind, I had the back door open when I packed up last time, and I didn't wasn't using the side door, so everything sort of kind of got in front of the door. But uh, um, probably Monday night, I'll be bringing the trailer back to the house uh, and work on it until. You know, the cocksuckers at Cape Coral Code Enforcement come and tell me I got to go. But uh, it's just the stuff I'm going to be doing here over the next couple days. It's really just small little things that need to be done before anything major comes along. I do want to get those bathroom walls up. That's uh, something I want to do. And I may do that before I bring it over to the house. I don't know. We'll see how I feel. But tomorrow, um, I plan to bring the trailer home with me. So I may just come get it in the morning and work on it during the day at the house. So anyway, um, the, uh, let me close this door. my utility room folks it's uh it's pretty much all done except for uh you know beginning to install my electronics uh, get my plumbing done which i want to i want to get these tanks uh hooked up i want to get the drains in i'm going to be putting a uh see those tanks right there have to be have the ability to be drained so there'll be a drain right here with a valve that I can open up and just simply drain out those tanks. So, be looking for that this week also. And, uh, you know, so I'm gonna call that a wrap for the day. I'm uh, gonna go home and spend some time with the wife. Maybe we're gonna go grab something to eat for lunch. There's a Greek restaurant over in Fort Myers that we found that we really like, so maybe I'll take her there if she wants to go. <coughs> um, I mean, I realize I'm not the best video person or taker or talker or whatever, but uh, I promise you that, uh, you know, as I begin to install the electronics and stuff like that, I think that, that will be, that'll be interesting. Um, and I think you guys will get a lot, get a lot out of that. Um, most of these videos at this stage are just, you know, just basic construction shit, which, you know, doing woodworking and stuff like that, which I'm no carpenter by any stretch of the imagination. I, I like doing it, but, and I guess to some degree I'm pretty good at it, but I, I don't want to be. That's not. It's not what I like doing. I can't say it's not what I like doing. It's not what I. Uh, nah, I take that back. I do like work, working with the wood, but I. For two months now, I've been working with the wood. Now I'm ready to work with some wires and some. Get the plumbing stuff. It's to me. It's the the end result is having the you know having everything work you know um i've got to design a uh, a way to mount my my propane tanks um and my generator and what i might do is run my propane tanks i've got four four 40 gallon tanks i may put those up against the trailer in some sort of a um, you know a 
car carriage of some sort to to hold them, you know, solid. And then I've got I've got plenty of room right there to mount a uh, a generator. Um, still trying to decide how I wanna if I wanna put it inside of a you know not a weather tight but a you know a, 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 a some sort of a shelter to keep it from you know just being out in the weather all the time. I mean. You, you can buy covers for them and stuff like that, but, you know, whatever. We'll, we'll figure that out. I don't need to know that right now. Um, plus, you know, you got to be thinking about, you know, how do you keep your, your propane tanks warm? Propane tanks will freeze, um, you know, when you use them a lot. Um, and 40 pound is right about at the threshold of where they'll start freezing. You know from from heavy use so if you're running a generator full time off of propane i don't care if it's 100 degrees outside the propane tank will freeze and thus your propane is frozen and therefore you don't have any you don't have any generator running so um gotta tell you my my arm is feeling better but I've been I've been nursing it uh, just because I don't want to hurt it um, all right so we'll be back tomorrow um, I hope these freaking videos come out today I know some of them didn't yesterday all right if you like the channel subscribe if you like the video like it if you don't well I don't know what the hell to tell you um, talk to you later Bye.